This is 16.1, Male Reproductive System Notes. The essential question is, what structures make up the testes, what are their functions, and what regulates their functions? The reproductive system deals with reproduction, which is the process of producing or creating an individual or an offspring. In humans, it requires sexual reproduction, which involves two parents contributing half of the genetic material. And fertilization is the fusion of egg and the sperm cells to form a zygote. The major organs involved in reproduction are the gonads, which are the primary sex organs, and their job is to produce gametes, which are sex cells. In males, the primary sex organ is the testes, and their job is to produce sperm, or the male gamete. And then in female, the ovaries are the primary sex organ, and they produce ova or egg, which is the female gamete. The function of the male reproductive system is to produce and disseminate large quantity of the male gamete, which are the sperms. And remember that testes are the primary sex organ, but then also there are ductus system, which their job is, it's a collection of tubes where the male gamete or the sperm must travel through. And those structures are the epididymis, the ductus deferens, or it's also called vas deferens, and the urethra. The accessory organs are secondary sex organs, and they are three glands that produce certain type of fluids that contribute to the semen, which is the fluid that the sperm swims in, and the external genitalia involves the penis and the scrotum. The covering of the testis is called the tunica albuginea. Tunica means layer. So the outer shell or the capsule that surrounds the testes is called the tunica albuginea. Here is the capsule or the tunica albuginea. And then the extensions that penetrate into the testes are called the septa. Septa is plural and septum is singular. And then those things will separate the testes into compartments or sections called the lobule. So each one of these is called a lobule. So testes again is the primary sex organ for the males and they are divided into lobules by the septa which is an extension of the uh, tunica albuginea. Within these lobules are one to four seminiferous tubules, which are highly coiled tubes within the lobules. And there inside the tubules is where the sperms are produced. And also within these tubes are cells called Sertoli cells, and their job is to provide nutrients and support the, the development and the uh, health of the sperms. And then eventually what's going to happen is all of those tubes will merge into an area called recte testes, which is right here in the center portion. And then from there, they will travel to the structures at the top right here. All of these coil structures here, the tubes here, are what's called the epididymis. The area outside the seminiferous tubules, this tan colored, cream colored area here, are the outside the tubes, the space around outside it, contain cells called interstitial cells or Leydig cells. And their job is to produce the male hormone, testosterone. So these right here are your interstitial or Leydig cells. So the journey of the sperm starts in the seminiferous tubules within the lobules of the testes. These are the highly coiled. And then they will lead into the center portion, which is called the rete testes. Then it will travel to the tubes in this area, which are your epididymis. Then, after 
remaining in the epidermis, it will travel up and exit out through the ductus deferens or the vas deferens. Spermatogenesis is the process of producing sperm cells or the male gamete. It begins at puberty and it will continue throughout life and it takes about 64 to 72 days for production. And it produces about 100 million sperm cells each day. Spermatozoa is the actual term for the mature sperm cell that will eventually move to the epididymis for further maturation and that's where it will be stored until it exits the body. So as the sperm cells goes through spermatogenesis, it takes on different names depending on the stages. So this first stage is called the primordial germ cell, that is the, the, the cell before it becomes even a sperm cell. Then the immature sperm cell is called spermatogonium. That's when the cell divides and takes on a mitotic division. Remember, mitosis is the process of creating identical cells. Then the spermatogonium will become the primary spermatocyte. Then that primary spermatocyte will go through the first myo my meiotic division. Remember, meiosis is the process of forming gametes, the sex cells, and it go through two divisions. So that's your um, first division. After the first division, you have the secondary spermatocyte. And then after the second split, remember at the, after the first split, you have two cells. Then after the second meiotic division, you have four cells, and they're called spermatids. Spermatids do not have a tail and they cannot swim until they become the mature sperm cell, which is the spermatozoa. Remember that when the development of the sperm, it occurs toward the outer area or layer of the seminiferous tubule. And then they will, as they mature, they become closer to the center where they will pick up the cell, uh, the tail and then they will be stored in the epidermis until they're able to be released. There are three major portions to the sperm cell, the head, the midpiece, and the tail. The head contains the nucleus, which holds the DNA from the father, and then the acrosome is the anterior covering of the head, which contains enzymes to be able to penetrate the female egg cell. Midpiece contains mitochondria, and recall from biology that mitochondria is the site of cellular respiration, which produces ATP, which is the name of the energy. The ATP is needed for the sperm cell to make the journey through the female reproductive system. The flagella, the tail, uh, is the only human cells with a tail and the job of the or the function of the flagella is to allow for the swim uh, the uh, sperm cell to swim or propel the spermatocyte. There are various male sex hormones, two that are made by the pituitary gland in the brain. That's the luteinizing hormone and the job of the luteinizing hormone is to stimulate the seminiferous tubules to produce and secrete testosterone. And the follicle stimulating hormone, it um, kicks in during puberty and it stimulates the Sertoli cells for sperm production and maturation. Another male hormone is the gonadotropin releasing hormone which is produced by the hypothalamus, which is also in the brain. That stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to release the luteinizing and the follicle-stimulating hormone. The gonadotropin-releasing hormone is triggered by low levels of testosterone in the body, and this whole hormone regulation is controlled by the negative feedback. When there's too much, it shuts it off. When there is not enough, testosterone, then it will stimulate the uh, hormones to produce more testosterone. Testosterone is the primary 
male sex hormone, and it d stimulates the development of the primary and secondary sex characteristics. Obviously, primary sex characteristics are the formation of the male reproductive organs, and the secondary sex characteristic would be deepening of the, um, the changes that occurs in the body when puberty occurs, which includes deepening of the voice, increased hair growth, enlargement of the skeletal muscles, and thickening of bones, and testosterone is also involved in the sex drive. So low levels of testosterone can trigger the release of so low levels of testosterone can trigger the release of the trigger the anterior pituitary or the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus, remember, will trigger the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone, which will stimulate the anterior pituitary. But also the low levels of testosterone can trigger the anterior pituitary to release follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. The follicle stimulating hormone will stimulate the Sertoli cells to start spermatogenesis, will then, which will um, cause the sperm production. And the luteinizing hormone will cause the Leydig cells to produce testosterone. When there is high levels of testosterone, the testes is going to release a hormone called inhibin, which is going to stimulate the hypothalamus to release a hormone called gonadotropin inhibiting hormone, and it's going to stop the production of luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone by stopping the anterior pituitary from producing these hormones.